Okay, there we go. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Just figure that one out. Um, okay, now you can hear me. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone, now that we've got that squared away and fixed. Um, thank you, Bob, and good morning to you. If you, uh, thank you for joining us, first of all. Uh, we're going to be talking about using uh, photos in Appraise It Pro. So if uh, you have any questions, we're going to go over uh, four main ways that you can use a pro, uh, photos in Appraise It Pro. These will also, a lot of them apply to Appraise It Classic as well. Um, if you haven't started using Appraise It Pro, you can contact our sales office. Uh, and um, you can just call 800-644-4051 and you'll be able to um, get with our sales office. They'll be able to set you up. There's no additional charge for Appraiser Pro. They can get you with one of our uh, tech support people and then they can help you in installing Appraiser Pro and getting it working. And hopefully it will go smoother than me trying to get my audio working in this webinar. This is like one of the, maybe the fourth or fifth one that I've done on YouTube. You'd think I would know how to do this by now, but I guess not. Just as Bob did, on the right-hand side of the video, or if you're on mobile down below, you will be able to ask questions. I encourage you to ask questions. Um, I only generally use first names, so don't worry about, um, you know, with the recording of this, it's going to have your name on or anything like that. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. If you are watching this after the fact, or if you are not signed in on Google or YouTube, you can also email me your questions. Just uh, simply send an email to training at sfrep.com and I will be happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have. Also during this webinar, there is going to be a small little uh, bracket or square or rectangle that's gonna be in the lower right-hand corner of the video. If you click on that, you can do one of two things. You can either make the video larger or you can make it take up the full screen. Now just keep in mind, if you do the full screen, that you won't be able to ask questions. So you may wanna use the little rectangle one, <clears throat> which will put it into theater mode. The chat will then be below and you can still ask questions and see the chat. Uh, also, good morning to you, Andre. Andre, one of our longtime customers, I've dealt with you a, a lot and um, always good to see you. All right, so dealing with photos in Appraise It Pro. Now, I am an amateur photographer. This is my camera right here and I'm gonna be kind of using this to show you how you get photos off of your camera. Of course, not all of you are using a, a DSLR to take your photos. A lot of you are using point and shoots or using your phone, and we're gonna go over that as well. But what I'm gonna show you first um, applies to both point and shoot cameras and to fancier cameras like DSLRs if you happen to use those. Now on this particular camera, this is a Canon, the memory card is kept in a small little door here on the side. So I'm going to take that memory card out. This is a 128 gig uh, SD card. Pretty much every camera now, if it uses a memory card, is going to use an SD card. Some cameras might use micro SD cards. To show you what a micro SD card looks like, I actually don't, yeah, here I do, I do have one. So this is a micro SD card little tiny one. These are what go into Android phones. So if you have an Android phone, you'll be very familiar with this. So this is a micro SD card. They will usually come with a small adapter, which the, is getting blown out by the lights there, but you can see the small adapter there. And then what you do is you just take the micro SD card, you pop it into the adapter, and now you have a regular SD card, which will fit into most computers. If you have a laptop, most laptops are still, they, they come with these built-in, a, a reader for these built-in. And also most um, current desktops also come with an SD card, card reader built-in. So you can't see I'm on a desktop down here, but I have a card reader, so I'm gonna slide this in. And when I do so, it is going to ask me, now you can't see this because this is gonna happen on my other monitor, but in this case, actually, what's happened is I've already set it up um, so that will launch Windows Photos, okay? So if you look over on my screen now, it's gonna automatically launch Windows Photos. Now I'm in Windows 11. If you're in Windows 10, it will be a little bit uh, different look and layout, but this will still apply. Now, of course, to all of this, if you are 
um, you know, having problems with getting photos, you can also contact our tech support. Um, and of course, if you don't know that number, that's 800-644-4051. And then what they'll be able to do is log into your computer and they can kind of tailor this to what your situation is. But I'm using Windows 11, so that's what we're gonna kind of show here. So when I placed that memory card into my system, uh, uh, earlier today, it asked, hey, what do you want to do with a memory card when you insert it? And I chose to open up Windows Photos. So that's what it did. It just automatically, I put the memory card in there and it opened up Windows Photos for me. You can also set it up so that it'll, also, it'll, it'll just open up the folder and then you can navigate to the folder. We're going to go over how that works here in a couple of minutes. But this is the way that you can use the built-in Windows Photo Viewer and Manager to do all of this. Now, uh, as you can tell, I am, my kind of thing is I take photos of airplanes and trains. I'm a transportation photographer. That's just what I do. It's my thing. So you're going to see a lot of airplanes and trains uh, when you're doing this. But these are my photos. Please ignore these. These are completely unedited. They are the raw photos that came off of the camera. Uh, when I went out to uh, Charlotte, the Charlotte airport, um, which is my hometown and it's the closest large airport to me. That's why they're mostly uh, American Airlines is that's a huge American Airlines hub. So how do I get these photos onto my computer so that I can use them in a Praise It Pro or a Praise It Classic? So what, uh, what it will do by default is I can come in here and I can select the photos that I want to transfer. So uh, let's see, I like this one and maybe this uh, 737 Max here. And uh, I don't know, we'll also choose, uh, we'll choose this one as well. Okay, so now I have three photos that I've selected here. Now there are a whole lot more on this memory card. If I come on down here, there's a ton of photos on here, but by default, it's gonna show me my most recent ones up here at the top. So I've selected the three that I want to transfer over. So I'm going to say add three items. And then I'm going to say, where do I want it to go? I don't want it to go to the pictures folder on my OneDrive. Instead, I want it to go to the pictures folder on my computer. If I want, I could also create a subfolder if I want. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and dump them right into the pictures folder. Hit import. And now it's copied all three of those into my photos, my pictures folder on my computer. So now that that's happened, now I can come over here and you'll see there they are. There are the three photos. This is a photo that already existed. So there's three photos now that I've transferred into my pictures folder. Now there are other uh, photos in uh, other photos folders, excuse me, that I created earlier. But for right now, we're just going to deal with the pictures folder. All right, so there they are. I know that they're on there, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Now, how do I get them into my appraisal report? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Appraise It Pro. Of course, you can't see the, the splash screen because it's on my other monitor, but here we go. Now there's a Praise It Pro. And I'm just going to start a blank 1004 report. There we go. So there's a blank 1004 report. Now what I want to do is I want to add these photos in. Now, of course, these are photos of airplanes. They don't go into an appraisal report, but we're just, I don't have any photos that I've taken of houses because I'm not an appraiser. So we're just going to deal with these airplane photos and we're going to do a little bit of make-believe. So just use your imagination here. All right. So a couple ways that I'm going to do this. The, the, the main way that a lot of you are probably going to do this is you are going to use, come over here to tools and you're going to use image manager. And what image manager is, is it's just an easy way to deal with photos in an appraisal report. So here I've actually, uh, I'm, I'm directly on the memory card. So I could, if I wanted to, just drag stuff over from the memory card. And that is absolutely something that you can do. Now, most memory cards, you'll see in the directory tree here, EOS Digital, that is the name of the memory card. That's, what, that's the name that my camera gave it because I have a, a digital Rebel, uh, EOS Rebel, TI-8, I think. Yeah, T-8i, excuse me. Um, so... In most cases, there's going to be a DCIM folder, which stands for Digital Camera Images. And then off of that, there'll be like a 100 Canon or a 102 Canon or Nikon or whatever your camera manufacturer is. And then you'll have access directly to the photos. But what we did was we put everything into our pictures folder. So I'm going to come over here to pictures and boom, there they are. 
So remember earlier, we copied everything into pictures. There they are. Now I can go ahead and simply click and drag them over into my report. If I choose this right here, recycle used images, it will delete these and throw them into the recycling bin. I have that unchecked because I don't wanna delete them, but you may want to do that. If you are dealing directly with your memory card like I was over here, do not have this checked because then it will delete your images or it'll recycle your images from your memory card. So make sure that is not checked if you are dealing directly with your memory card because you don't wanna use the images, uh, drag them over and then have them deleted from the memory card. Um, and then use share, shared photo descriptors. Generally, unless you're in a, a uh, network environment, you're not gonna have that selected. Uh, I would only select that if our tech support tells you to. All right, so notice when I dragged these over that these ghosted out, that lets me know that I've already used those. It's just a little visual indicator for you. And when I'm done, I'm gonna click transfer to report. I'm gonna close out of it. Now, if I come over here, I think that was the subject photos that I was dealing with. So if I come over here to uh, subject photos, which um, for some dumb reason I am not seeing, there it is, subject photos, double click. There they are, there are the three photos that I have there. And if I want, of course, I can right click and I could clear one out of there. And then I could relaunch image manager and I could put that photo uh, back in. Transfer it to report, close it, and now it's back in there. So that is the first way to load images into your report. That's the way that our tech support usually shows you. It's the way that a lot of people feel comfortable with, okay? However, there are other ways that you can add photos into your report. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click and I am going to clear these photos. Uh, clear and right click and clear. So now I'm gonna clear out these photos. There are other ways that you can do this. So if I want, I can open up a um, I can open up uh, a browse window here, and I'm going to come down here directly to the EOS digital card. Once again, remember DCIM digital camera images. Double click there, and then there's the 100 Canon. If you had taken a ton of photos, there may be a 101 or a 102 Canon. Um, usually, this MSC this is where it puts uh, other stuff, but all of your images and videos would be in this folder right here. So if I click on it, boom, there they are. Now, here are all of my images that are on that particular uh, camera. So here's some photos that I took while I was on a cruise. This is in, uh, these were in um, uh, Puerto Rico. Um, so if I want to take some of these photos, by the way, don't be that guy. <laughs> don't be the guy that takes photos with their iPad. Now, that being said, if you use our Inspect A Lot app, you might actually end up taking photos with your iPad, but like don't go on vacation and don't go in public and do this. Anyway, so let's say I wanna use this photo right here and I want to uh, put that into my report. Well, once I've got it pulled up here in the, um, the folder browser, in my file browser here, so now that I've got it pulled up, what I can do is I can just simply click and drag them in. So I got that first one, there's one, and then we'll put that one in there. So I can just click and drag and put these photos directly into the report. That's the second way that you can deal with photos. And remember, when you save this report, the comp manager is automatically going to um, archive these photos and associate them with this particular address. All right, now the third way, let me clear these out of here. And I could go to image manager and clear them that way, but I'm just gonna do it by just right clicking and selecting clear. Now, what if you take photos with your cell phone, with your mobile phone? If you have an iPhone or if you have an Android phone, you can of course plug your phone directly into your computer and then navigate to it or use the Photos app to load those in. You can still do it that way. That's what a lot of you probably do. But there is another way that you can do that that's a little bit more easy, in my opinion, um, and that is by using cloud storage. 
So if you are on an iPhone, you will want to have iCloud backup being done. Uh, if you have a larger iPhone, you will want to pay uh, for the iCloud storage. Uh, and for, for goodness sake, please, even if you don't use your camera for taking work photos, the one on your phone, uh, get iCloud or another type of cloud storage for your phone because I, 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 I keep seeing people destroying their phones, dropping them in a river, never see their phone again, and they've lost all their, 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 everything that's on their phone. And we live on our phones these days. So please have some type of automatic backup on your phone. If you're in the iPhone ecosystem, that is going to be iCloud. And that's what I have. Uh, but you can do this on Android as well. So I'm going to show you on an iPhone just because that's what I have. And, uh, and I know that most people have iPhones. But if you do have an Android phone, you can do this as well with either Google Photos, Google Automatic Photo Backup. You can also do it with uh, Samsung has one. And I think even like Verizon has one that you can set up as well. But what I'm going to be showing you is the way that it works on an iPhone. But this will also apply to Android as well. If you have questions on how to do this on an Android phone, you can contact our tech support. Um, I know a couple of our tech support people have Android phones and they would be able to walk you through this. Problem with an Android phone though is that there's dozens of different manufacturers and like a Samsung is going to do it differently than um, Motorola would. Motorola is going to do it differently than OnePlus would um, and etc. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to show you an iPhone because the iPhone's the same for every iPhone. It doesn't matter who your provider is. It doesn't matter who made the phone because only one company makes the phone. So how does this work? Well, what I'm going to do is I am, and I'm doing this on my other screen here. All right. So here is iCloud.com. So in my particular case, I'm using iCloud.com. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the Photos app here. Now, there are no photos that I don't care if you guys see. <laughs> I went and checked before. Um, so when you go into the Photos app, this is all web-based, by the way. We're just in the Chrome browser here. These are going to be all the photos that are on your phone. So, okay, so i got photos up here. Here are some... Um, uh, here are some photos that I actually, these are the same photos you saw from that camera, uh, memory card, but these were ones that I loaded onto my iPad and then edited. So these are the edited versions of those same photos. So let's say I want to take this photo right here and maybe I want to do this photo. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm selecting multiple photos by holding down the control button on my keyboard while I'm clicking. So I want to grab all of these photos right here and I want to put these um, onto my computer. So the way I do it is I select all of them. I come up here and I select this little icon right here for download. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download to them to my desktop and you'll see here iCloudPhotos.zip. So we'll do a save. And now I'm going to, mi I'm going to mi minimize everything here. And now it's just a regular old zip file. So if I pull these over here, it's just simply iCloud uh, photos.zip. If I double click on it, here are my iCloud photos. There they are. If I select this over here, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll have this in Windows 10 as well. There's like a display them as a uh, icon. But because this is a zip, it's not going to be able to show me an icon preview. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these. And let's say I'm going to make a, let's, let's make a new folder over here on the desktop. And I'm just going to call these. Uh, one, two, three, any street photos. There we go. So I'm going to click and drag all of these photos into that folder. There we go. And now if I open up that folder, there are my photos. Now, knowing this, that they're on the desktop and they're in this one, two, three, any street photos folder. Now I can come into, um, appraise it pro. I can open up image manager. And I can go to desktop and let's see, where is desktop? Uh, let's see, contained in desktop, there should be one, two, three, any street photos. There they are. And now I can simply click and drag these photos over, transfer to report. And there we go. All those photos are now in my report. 
And of course, if I wanted to, I could also open up that folder, which is here. And I could just simply click and drag that photo into the appraisal directly as well. So you have a couple of options. You can use the image manager or you can drag and drop your photos uh, into the report as well. That stuff also applies. Now the drag and drop doesn't apply to Appraisal Classic, but the use of image uh, of the uh, image manager does. Image manager is pretty much identical in Appraisal Classic, the same as it is in Pro. But the cool thing about Pro is you can add as many high resolution photos to Appraiser Pro as you want, and it is not gonna bog it down. It's not going to balloon or have issues. It will, uh, it will take those photos uh, happily and uh, you won't have any issues with it because of the, the great memory management and the fact that Appraiser Pro is a 64-bit program, that means that it uh, has access to all of the RAM on your computer system. So that's pretty much the, the, the three main ways that you're gonna get photos from your camera, whatever type of camera you may have, onto your computer and then use them as a in Appraiser Pro. Now, this can be subtly different or very different on different computers with different software. When you put in the memory card in your computer, it could launch some third-party photo program that you like to use. It could launch um, a photo program that was installed along with your camera. But usually you can copy those photos into the photos folder or you can drag and drop from that program directly into Appraise It Pro. As a matter of fact, I bet you if I pull up the photos program here, let's try this. I bet this will work because a lot of times Windows programs support dragging and dropping. So if I have this Windows program here, I've got my photos there. I bet you if I click and drag, boom, there you go. So Appraiser Pro allows you to drag and drop from other programs as well. So as long as that particular program supports dragging and dropping, which most do, you can just simply click and drag directly from that program right into Appraiser Pro. That's one of my favorite features of Pro is, is the way that, that you can just drag and drop things directly into the program. So does anyone have any questions because at this point we're at the point we're going to ask questions now if you're watching use use the chat over on the right or below to ask any questions that you might have if you are watching this video after the fact and i'm going to have to edit that part where i messed up the audio at the beginning from the video but if you're watching this video after the fact you can send an email to uh to uh training at sfrep.com uh, this is the email right here, training at sfrep.com, and I'll be happy to answer it. If you are watching this live, you can go ahead and you can use the chat to ask it live, and I will be happy to answer them for you. Also, uh, if you have not been using Appraiser Pro yet, I do encourage you to give our sales office a call. You can use 800-644-4051, or you can use our sales number, which is 800-523-0872. They both go to the same place. It doesn't matter which one you use. Or you can email sales at sfrep.com. Remember, there is no charge for using Appraise It Pro over Classic. And it's always good. You can have Appraise It Pro and Appraise It Classic on your system at the same time. So that will allow you to move over to Pro at your own pace. I'm not seeing any questions. So I'm hoping that I've answered all of your questions and you guys uh, know everything you need to know about using photos in Appraise It Pro. If you don't and you need assistance, just call our tech support, uh, tech support at 800-644-4051 or you can email them tech at sfrep.com. They can uh, either help you right then and there, log into your computer and figure it out with you and figure out the best way for this to work for you. Or they can um, set up a time, if you wanna email them, they can set up a time where they can call you and work it out with you. That way you don't have to potentially uh, be on hold or anything like that. Although usually when you call our tech support, you guys know this, you don't have to wait. Usually they answer the phone right away. So I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend coming up and I know the holidays are coming up. Keep in mind, we will be closed on Thursday and Friday uh, for Thanksgiving. 
but we will be open on uh, Saturday and Sunday with tech support. So if you need tech support, you can uh, contact them on uh, Saturday and Sunday, but don't be working on Thursday and Friday, please. Like, don't do that. Just take some time off, enjoy time with your family. And then if you need assistance, we can help you out on uh, Saturday and Sunday. Also coming up towards Christmas, we will be closed on a Christmas, I believe is on a Sunday this year, right? Yeah, pretty sure. Let me look. <laughs> Let's look. Christmas is on uh, December 25th is on a Sunday. Yeah. So we will actually be closed on Thursday and Friday right before Christmas. So keep that in mind. And of course, we won't be available on that Sunday either. But just keep that in mind that if you need assistance, make sure that you get all of your work done that, you know, t Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. All right. Hope all of you have a wonderful weekend coming up and a great Thanksgiving with your family. Y'all take care.